It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I'm using throughout the week. And I'm using this to record my voice just in case things don't work out because I can't find my lapel mic. All right, so let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and inks, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, um, <laughs> what do you think of the Caveco Dia and uh, my Ferris wheel inks? So leave a comment down below. So let's dive into it. So these are the pens and inks that I have this week. I have a Omos 360. Oops. I have, it, it doesn't sit in the pen tray super well. I have a Platinum 3776. I have a Sailor Regulus, I have a Wall Eversharp Skyline, a Pilot Justice 95, Platinum President, Visconti Mirage, Sailor 1911 Standard, Omas Ojiva, and a Caveco Dia uh, 803-07, which has a small story to go with it. So let's see how they write. So, my first pen up, and you, I'll talk about this here in a minute. My first pen up is the Omas Ojiva. Or I'm sorry, the Omas 360, which has that nice Rillo triangle shape. Which isn't for everybody, to be sure. Um, I think I showed you in my review the interesting cartridge system, which I'm not going to open that right now because of... Uh, how loosely the cartridge seems to sit in this pen. One thing I noticed, I put a cartridge of uh, diamine ancient copper in it, because that's what I had, and it formed a little crust. Not as bad as it has in some pens, but that's why I'm having trouble writing, is it did crust in this pen. So uh, apparently this pen doesn't have as good of a seal as some of my pens do. But I am wiping it on my ink cloth here. I wanted you to see this mess, but then I want to write with it, so i got to wipe that out. But Yeah, the crusting is a feature of this ink I don't particularly care for. Let's get at a better angle here. That is a medium, right? Yeah, there's an M on it. Okay. And let's be fair. The pen did sit for a week. Because uh, my pen's in use that I missed last week. Uh, although the crust was on it last week. I was going to talk about it last week. And it doesn't, to my eyeball, seem to be much more crust than it had last week. But still... Something about that ink that I don't like. And a couple of Diamine's inks kind of in this orange family seem to do that. But it is a nice color. Uh, my next pen, the Platinum 3776. One of their special editions, a Sheng Yo finish. I see they have a new one out that's kind of purpley. I think it's attractive. I like their last one too, the blue one. Uh, I haven't purchased them because, you know, why? <laughs> I've got uh, just about every nib size I want. I don't really want an extra fine or an ultra extra fine, so no reason to buy them. Because really it's the nib that it comes down to. This is an ink that you probably want in a broader pen. It's a nice bright ink. Sailor Gentle Apricot. Uh, Penultimate Dave did a video on oranges this week. I, I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description, but I might forget because I just thought of it. But, uh, talked about orange colored inks this week and uh, this is one of the ones he talked about and he said it had a little bit of sheening which I guess I've never noticed 
Doesn't mean it's not there. But uh, I probably won't be able to see it on this paper because this is a more absorbent paper. And the sheening he had, there wasn't really a whole lot. My next pen has sat for years unused. But then I inked it up for my video on black inks and, you know, found a new appreciation for it. I really like the retro kind of 70s look to it. This It's a Sailor Regulus. And the ink in it is not, you know, one of my favorite versions of black, but Rohrer and Klingner. Oh, sh I mean, oh heck. I forgot to write the name of the pen. Uh, I think it's a fine. Anyway, Rohrer and Klingner, sorry, Rohrer and Klingner, Leipziger Schwarz, Schwarz, Leip, okay, for some reason I thought there was an E in there somewhere, and it's kind of a bluish black. I don't know, it's not one of the warm blacks. This also has a bit of sheen to it. I've, I've even seen it. Um, I've been, uh, I did that video, must have been early June, where I talked about uh, all the different shades of black. It was right when the protests were starting and Anyway, I did an all-black video, and I am still trying to get through all of my black ink. <laughs> um, I had the bright idea while I was inking all these up. Hey, I should do an all-blue video or an all-orange video, but... I don't know, because it's taken me a while, and I'm using these pens to write, you know, my regular everyday writing, so... Because I use black for that, so it's going to be a lot harder if I use some really wacky color. <laughs> so, it may be a while before you see that, because I... I have more pens ink than God right now. All right, my next pen is a Wall Eversharp Skyline vintage version. I do have a modern one. That's a totally different animal. Uh-oh. A lot of these pens just kind of sat here all week because I wasn't using them. Because uh, I, you know, I... First I had it in my thought last week, oh, I'll just do pens and use, I'll be a little bit late, and events got in the way, so they've been sitting. And this is usually a pen that does not sit, and I have some concerns about how well this one uh, holds a seal anyway. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of this. Doesn't mean it's empty, but uh, the, the ink is all dried on the nib. Um, I feel like I should grab you a replacement pen. So we'll make up for it. We'll use the... I'll have to remember to put this in the video description. My platin... No, sorry, my senator president. Uh, I will be doing... I've actually already filmed it. I will be doing a video soon where I talk about the sailor... Uh, no, I'm sorry. The plat... The, yeah. The senator president. Uh, and I compare the gold and the steel nibs. But you can't see the steel nib one until the video appears on this channel. So this is the gold nib. And this is Noodler's. Black Swan. In Australian Rose. One of my favorite inks of all time. As the bottle grows lower, though, I worry what the next bottle will be. I know a few years ago he had some trouble. Um, one of the companies that supplies dye that he uses to make the ink changed its recipe or something, and it ended up with a totally different version of this ink. And uh, so I'm kind of... And, and then there's the Noodler's inconsistency anyway, so I'm kind of worried what will happen next time I try to buy uh, this ink. But in the end, it is just ink. 
This is my Pilot Justice 95. Normally, I think I would have emptied it out by now. I just have so darn many pens inked up right now. Fun thing with this pen is it can be adjusted from hard to soft. Now the ink in this one is another really nice one. I've seen some greenish shading on this on the right paper and the right pen. Yeah, and now that the Sailor Apricot's dry, I don't see any sheening on that. Yeah, I think that looks good. It's just a, a nice reddish ink, and then it has a, you know, a little bit different kind of shading, I suppose. The, uh, I'll bring up my Platinum President now. I was experimenting, I was told to a long time ago, I finally got around to it, experimenting with some Ferris wheel inks. So this has one of the three that you're going to see today. It's a Canadian brand. Uh, the colors are uh, interesting. This is kind of a dusky pink. It's actually called Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose. I'll just abbreviate. If you want the full thing, it's in the video description. But, and I liked it. They, uh, in their advertising, they uh, dilute the ink in the bottles. Uh, it makes them look like these magical perfume bottles. You know, the reality of the ink is it's a lot darker in the bottle. Because if it was as light as it is in the pictures, you wouldn't be able to see it right now. My next pen also has a uh, Ferris wheel ink in it. I liked this next one. Uh, I've, I, think, I know I have said on this channel I, I like yellow inks. I just can't find many that are usable. Uh, so this pen is a Visconti Mirage. Has one of their steel nibs. And this has Ferris Wheel Press buttered popcorn. And I think for yellow, that does very well. I'll be honest, um, I'm not a big popcorn eater. And if it has a lot of butter on it, I actually don't like it. Is that weird? This is my Sailor 1911 Standard. This has a fun nib on it. It's a zoom nib. Which, uh, with this magnification, probably you can't make much out of that. But Anyway, your angle gives it different properties. So, Sailor, 1911, S, with a zoom nib. And this ink is Sailor, Gentle. French seems to use a few of those fun diacritical marks. 
you know, I took Spanish in high school, three years of it. They only had uh, the one accent mark. Um, German has the umlaut. Polish has a few. Mm, I don't, well, English doesn't have any. This is my Omas Ojiva with a uh, Omas black ink in it. I did a lot of daily writing with this one. Uh, and this has the medium extra flexibile nib in it. And good luck getting either the pen or the ink now. I have a bottle of the Omos Black, and I have a bottle of the Omos Gray. You know, the black is just a black ink. There's nothing particularly special about it. Um, bottle's kind of nice, that nice faceted bottle. The Omos Gray is a very warm gray, which I enjoy. So my last pen is going to feature in a video eventually. This is a Platinum, or I'm sorry, a Caveco 803-07 has an oblique fine nib. Uh, the reason this is going to feature in a video, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story here after I'm done with the pens. It was sent to me by Proto Pens. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to entice me to buy the pen or not. You know, what they said is you should talk about this pen on your channel. Well, I uh, didn't because... I didn't do pens in use last week for reasons. But it is an interesting story, so I'm going to share it, and I'll put the link in the video description. And that one I know is already there. And are you looking at this ink and saying, oh my god, that's useless? That's exactly the thought I'm having, too. But I will just say, in this ink's defense, your more pale inks need to be in a broader nib and I think I just picked the wrong pen for it which is fine because this pen is actually you know the fact that I put this ink in this pen caused me to make a video so I guess it's all worth it so Ferris wheel press and this one is called honeydew melon and I will admit a honeydew isn't my favorite type of melon but I think the color matches pretty well I only have one melon growing in my garden this year I bought three melons but <laughs> we won't talk about certain four-footed animals with big fluffy tails and big ears but anyway that's uh, Honeydew Melon. One of my other topics that's going to come up today is I purchased a book. Can't quite get the book on the whole camera, can I? Can I zoom out more? Nope. <laughs> so uh, we'll talk. I'll talk about the book a little bit. But I'll just give you a quick perusal here. It just has a lot of history and old advertising and old pens of a vintage. There's the authors of a vintage um, fountain pen maker. Uh, they are still around. Oh, it also gets into some other brands. I forgot about that. The last chapter is their competition in Denmark. But it's a vintage Danish pen maker and uh, called Penall. And it just gets into their history and it is this really in-depth book. And I would I would say I wish somebody would do a book like this about Pencala, but somebody did. It's just out of print right now, so I'm hoping it comes back in print or that I can find a copy that's at a price I'm willing to pay. So, uh, in the video, you saw me using a... I'm using my notes now. You saw me using a Caveco Dia 803-07. This is a 1930s pen. It was... Um, probably from shortly before the war and anyway I uh, was contacted by Proto Pens about two weeks ago not quite 
uh, they wanted me to share the story of a Caveco Dia 85 that they had for sale on their website. And, uh, you know, I don't do advertising. I don't work for other companies. Uh, I just do the pens that interest me. So you know, I wasn't sure at first how to take it. Uh, but, you know, I read the story. And I thought, okay, this is why they want me to share it. Uh, it is actually a good story. So uh, the pen is now sold, so I don't feel like I'm selling a pen for somebody else. Um, Caveco, at the back in the 1930s, Europe was a major brand. Uh, stores all over were selling them, or else, uh, I, I, well, yeah, stores all over were selling them, and apparently Caveco even had its own stores, which uh, I don't know was if it, that's as much of a thing anymore, except maybe in really large cities. I guess there's Lamy stores and uh, Home Ball stores and you know, those brands, but not very many of them. But 1930s was a different retail world. Um, one store was in Bitola, which now is a city located in North Macedonia. A uh, little history there. Uh, North Macedonia was originally going to be called Macedonia, but the Greeks are like, ah, no. So uh, they finally settled a compromise, like adults do, you know, and they're calling the country uh, North Macedonia. Uh, but back in the 1930s, it was part of a country formed following the First World War called Yugoslavia. And this store sold luxury goods, and it actually continued to do so during the German occupation during the Second World War. I guess even Nazis buy luxury items. Who knew? <laughs> um, now, uh, after the war, of course, uh, communism took over Yugoslavia under the leadership of Josip Tito, who ruled the country until 1980, and, you know, read a little history on him, he's not such a sweet guy. <laughs> um, luxury goods were confiscated or hidden by the owners when the communists took over. And uh, items hidden in homes are actually still being discovered as people do renovations on their homes. Like, holy cow, what's all this luxury stuff here behind my wall that I wanted to knock out? Um, so the owner of the shop apparently sold it right before the end of the war. Now, the nephew of the owner decided recently to break up an old oak wardrobe that he had down in his basement. Um, he was going to make birdhouses out of it, which, yipe, uh, you know, oak's expensive, but whatever. I don't know what the state of the wardrobe was after, uh, or what it looked like or anything. It was old. And it's probably one of those furniture items that a lot of people are like, yeah, no, not in my house. But anyway, the important thing is, in the process of breaking it up, in the doors of this wardrobe, he found many, many pens and watches wrapped in what was a lot like tracing paper. In fact, all told, he found 32 pens and several dozen watches. Uh, the pens, of course, are mostly Caveco Dia and Caveco Helios, um, and then there was one Melby Transparent. And yes, ProtoPens bought these. This pen was the first one that they're going to be selling. They will be selling more. I guess they're doing restoration work on them. Um, I don't know where the watches ended up, but I'm pretty sure he found a buyer for watches of that age and sold them. Um, but these pens were hidden as most of the goods in the shop were confiscated. Um, of course, when you're living in communist Yugoslavia under Josip Tito, how do you sell them? Who's going to buy them? Who's going to buy them and not turn you into the secret police and all that? I don't know what Yugoslavia's secret police were called, but I know they had one. Um, so they just stayed hidden in this wardrobe following, you know, the end of the Second World War. Um, and things like this get forgotten, especially if the person who hid them away dies, which he did several decades ago. And uh, so because this nephew decided to build a birdhouse, they were rediscovered, which I just think that's really cool. So several decades after this guy died, and what, about 80 years? Not quite 80 years after they were hidden, this guy has given a, this grandfather gave a major financial boon to his family. So, I, yeah, I thought that was a story worth sharing.
And I did provide a link to this, the pen on uh, the video description. You know, it is uh, sold, so don't try buying it, but <laughs> you know, it's there. Um, another thing I showed you at the end of my camera B part, uh, I, I showed you the pen all pen. I, uh, the book, I, I'm going to actually do a separate video on that. I decided I was going to make it part of the pens in use. That was my original plan for the pens in use that never happened. But, uh, I decided, no, it deserves its own book or own video. Uh, Christian Olson just wasn't as flashy and fun as somebody like Edward Pencala, but, um, I think it's, it's, it's worth reviewing. So I'll be doing a separate video on that at some point soon. Yes, soon. <laughs> um, in other exciting news this week, I, uh, the state sends around this traveling COVID-19 testing unit. Uh, this on Tuesday, they were in my town, so I was tested. And a few days later, actually yesterday, which was Thursday, discovered that I'm COVID-19 free. Now, that's as of Tuesday. I did go to the post office on my way back to the house, so could have caught it there. And I went to the grocery store yesterday, so I could have caught it there. But otherwise, I've been here in my little frosty margarita colored paradise, so um, not too much chance of catching it in here. I have a package waiting at the post office, so I'm going to have to go back again. I've got my little squirrel mask. So, but anyway, um, other not so exciting news. I'm getting a new hot water tank. Yay. Because uh, went down yesterday, actually, uh, to get some clothes off the line. Uh, yes, I don't have a dryer, so I have a line. I dry my laundry on a line. And yes, it is in my basement. I should put it up, put one up in my yard, but... Anyway, stepped in water. So uh, I'll be doing the weekend without hot water. And then on uh, Monday, I'll be hopefully getting a new hot water tank. So, yay. Um, another exciting thing coming. Uh, oh, I got a bee that really likes the looks of my book, <laughs> my notebook here. Um, honey bee. So he's pretty tame. But anyway, uh, another exciting thing going on here, which... Uh, you can guess my feelings. Fourth of July down at Mount Rushmore. Uh, fireworks will be tonight. No, I won't be there. Um, I know South Dakota is one of the few states where COVID-19 has actually been going down. Uh, my state's basically been holding steady. Uh, but at this fireworks, which is gonna bring in people from all over, you're gonna have no social distancing because well, their governor is an interesting lady. Um, no masks required. And, uh, of course, there's the fire danger. And, you know, I'll just be honest. I don't like crowds anyway, so even in a non-COVID-19 year, I wouldn't touch that thing with a 10-foot pole because I don't like crowds. And a nightmare for me would be after the fireworks, when it's time to go home and you're driving through... I don't know what they do, probably at the, I mean, they're expecting like seven or 8,000 people, uh, more people than Trump got at his Tulsa rally, but uh, I don't know what they'll get, so you'll know probably by the time you see this video, but uh, just that whole driving out in crowds in a dark parking lot with people and cars going everywhere is just, ugh, that's a nightmare to me. Uh, I, I have eyesight trouble anyway, so yeah. So it's safer if I just don't go. So I'll never go. Um, and I think, you know, you can pick your favorite event. But one thing that's been interesting, you know, again, I'm using this as my microphone just in case that one doesn't work because there is a little wind today. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how many things people do that are being caught on this. And you, it just, you know, George Floyd, uh, we're finding a whole bunch of, they're calling them Karens, but they're not all female, they're not all white. Uh, how many things we're catching on the cell phone where you're just like, holy cow, uh, you actually talk that way. And you don't, it's not a hidden phone, you don't even mind that somebody's filming it. Uh, a couple of them say, well, put that phone away. Uh, they don't like being caught that way, but. It just, uh, 
kind of blows my mind because I'd be super embarrassed to be filmed acting that way. You know, I just think of myself teaching it. If I were to go off on some kid in a, you know, just get really angry and say something stupid and whoop, <laughs> guess what? There it is. Because they all have them. So the wind is picking up, so I think I better close it off there. But I just want to remind you, you know, tomorrow is 4th of July. Uh, NPR... I put a link to it down below. NPR is reading the Declaration of Independence again. A uh, whole bunch of different people reading parts of it. And, uh, you know, Declaration of Independence is an interesting document. And it... You know, one thing, uh, this time of year, we get all rah-rah, let's, let's wave the flag and everything. But, you know, a lot more important than the symbol is what it stands for. And... Uh, don't be afraid to question your government. Unless you live in a place like communist Yugoslavia, then be afraid, although it needs to be questioned. Um, because a big part of patriotism is questioning that government and holding it accountable. And uh, criticizing it when it's wrong. Our, this country was formed because of dissent. And I think that's it's patriotism is easy when you're waving the flag and you know standing for the national anthem it's a lot harder when you're criticizing that same government and uh, from time to time it needs to be criticized so anyway I want to thank you for watching and uh, if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points I would invite you to subscribe and again um, what do you think of that story about the Caveco Dia? I, I find that fascinating. Uh, what do you think of my Ferris wheel? Oh shit, I got a phone call. So, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.